Guys, a few days before Christmas, a few days before I left to Europe, uh, to the UK, I bumped into someone here in San Francisco's community uh, of uh, fragrance lovers and uh, he said, "Let's. I'm going to show you some fragrances. And he showed a bunch of fragrances to me and then he just said, these are yours, you can have them. So in today's video, I'm doing a haul video of fragrances that I was recently gifted, plus some fragrances that I purchased myself. These are all discontinued fragrances, classics, vintage, uh, you name it. 11 fragrances, so this is a smaller haul video, but classic and, you know, as I said, discontinued vintage uh, fragrances. Mostly men's, if you're curious to learn about them. And uh, what I should say is some of these fragrances I've been wanting, and I'm glad I have them. Find out what they are coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yeah, today we're talking about some uh, vintage fragrances, discontinued fragrances, classic fragrances that I've been wanting and that and that this is a haul video. A haul video that is mostly gifted, some purchased, and I'll let you know the, the, the ones that were given to me. But uh, this person that gifted some of these fragrances to me said, you know, you collect fragrances, so these are yours. And uh, one of the fragrances that I've been wanting to buy for the longest time, I wore in the late 90s, loved it, loved it a lot, and it was gifted to me. So I was very, very happy for this one. This was a great Christmas gift for me. This is Gucci Envy. Any of you know this one? This to me was such a great fragrance. It, it was interesting because I was uh, traveling uh, and um, I went to Chicago and there I went to the Macy's in downtown and went to the you know the fragrance department there you know there was no niche stores at the time it was mostly department stores sampled this there fell in love with it and bought it and you know I wore two bottles of this stuff so I'm glad to have a bottle uh, this is a fragrance created by Daniela Andrie in fact it was launched in 1998 and that's when I bought it for the first time in 98 I bought it in 98 and I believe in 2000 I bought another bottle of it and this is a fragrance that was created under Tom Ford I think he did Envy and then he did Rush which I also wore this is ginger, cardamom, sandalwood, lavender, incense, vanilla, tobacco, pepper, mahogany, amber, vetiver, patchouli, leather. So this is definitely sandalwoody, but also zingy with the ginger. It's got that zing, the bite, the kick with the ginger. But of course, there's lots of aromatics and spices in here as well. Some smokiness from incense. It was short-lived. It didn't, it didn't stay around for a long time. Uh, although, I think it could have been, you know, discontinued towards the end of the uh, 2000s, I think. I'm not 100% sure because once I stopped wearing it uh, after the second bottle, I didn't wear it anymore, so I don't know what, what happened. I, I didn't keep track of it, but most likely it was around for a good 10 years. So moving on to another Gucci fragrance that came out uh, 10 years prior to Envy. This is from 1988. This is Gucci Nobile, this one right here. So this is a tester. Uh, it looks like it is a tester because it's got some writing on the back. At least it looks like a tester. Maybe it's not a tester. So Gucci Nobile is an aromatic fougere launched in 1988. I don't know the perfumer on this one. It's not revealed or disclosed uh, on the databases, so I can really find out. But thankfully, I was able to find out that Daniela Andrie did Gucci Envy. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, I just found out for the first time when I was putting my notes together for this video. And this bottle is not spraying very well. Let's do... This is not a full, full bottle, obviously, but I've been wanting a bottle of Gucci Nobile for the longest time as well. Uh, it's a 1988 fragrance. I never wore this one. I actually smelled it uh, somewhere in passing and it was really highly priced and so I didn't buy it, but I wanted a bottle. Thankfully, I have it now. It's not full, but still uh, very sharp, kind of um, very herbal and kind of uh, tart citruses with herbal uh, aromatics and things like that. Uh, it's kind of... Um, I don't know if I want to say it's kind of in the ballpark of uh, polo or something like that, 
more like a Drakkar or Bowling Green to me. Uh, it's more of a Fougere rather than a Shepra, which Polo is a Shepra. But there are some kind of like, in, you know, uh, notes that kind of like go from one fragrance to the other. But there lots of oak moss in this one. This is definitely uh, a vintage fragrance because they don't make this anymore. They haven't made this fragrance for a long time. So this stuff still smells great today. Absolutely love it. Smells fantastic. Uh, I'm so glad to have this one. Two amazing Gucci fragrances, Gucci Envy and Gucci Nobile. I have them finally and uh, they'll be kept here really nicely uh, once this place is uh, redone. All right, so if you caught that video I did with Dahlia, the storage unit uh, haul video, storage locker uh, auction haul video I did, I spoke a lot about uh, Jessica McClintock fragrances in that video. Well, there was one male fragrance launched from Jessica McClintock called Scott McClintock. That's this right here. This is another fragrance I've wanted to have as well but I never wore it and I didn't remember what it smelled like. It is considered a woody aromatic and it features notes of lavender, sandalwood, amber, musk, patchouli, vanilla, and bergamot. So I've got a tiny little bottle here and I remember seeing this fragrance. I, I never really bought it. In fact, I kind of didn't like a lot of Jessica McClintock fragrances. I don't know why. Although they were all women's fragrances and when I was there to buy fragrances for my mom, uh, they never really struck, you know, stood out or anything. But this one, for some reason, did. I really loved the bottle and I wanted the bottle, so here we have a bottle. So this one to me seems like it's been, it's turned a little. It's not its best. I can smell that it's kind of gone bad a little bit. Um, not really getting too much, like, um, they're not vibrant notes is what I should say. But definitely there's aromatics there and some woods and some musk. But whatever bergamot is in here seems to be a lot and seems to have kind of turned, unfortunately. It's too bad, but uh, I can kind of get an idea of what that fragrance is. But this next one, this next one, I've been wearing it and it smells super fantastic. I wore one bottle of this back in the late 90s, early 2000s. This is Rochamp Man, this one right here. Oh my God, this stuff smells so good. So good, this smells so like back when I remember smelling. So this is not a newer bottle most likely, it's probably definitely vintage because the lavender and the cappuccino or coffee note in here smells super amazing together. Uh, I'm wearing it now actually and I'm loving the way I'm smelling. It's not really a heavy fragrance, this is Eau de Toilette I believe, uh, but man the combination is great. And this came out like, uh, two, three years after Mugler's uh, Amen, so uh, Angel Men. Uh, I felt like it was kind of somewhere around that kind of a ballpark, but not quite. Um, and this is a 1999 launch created by Maurice Roussel, amazing perfumer, although I hated his last uh, Frederick Moll fragrance. And I forgot to mention the year of release for Scott McClintock. It was 1993. So this, uh, Rocha Man is considered a woody spicy, but I would call it um, gourmand aromatic as well because it's got gourmand notes in here. Cappuccino, amber, lavender, vanilla, raspberry, sandalwood, patchouli, cedar, lily of the valley, bergamot. This smells fantastic. I wish it was heavier, denser. I, I Man, it's so good. So, so good. Uh, I absolutely love it. The combination of the ca cappuccino coffee with lavender and vanilla is super delicious. So, so delicious. Any of you a fan of this one? I hate this bottle, but uh, I love the smell. Really, really love the smell. So going back to that video I did with Dahlia, the storage unit haul video, the storage unit auction haul video, we spoke a lot about Liz Claiborne fragrances. One of the fragrances which turned out to be not a fragrance, but like powder uh, that was in that video was from Liz Claiborne. It was called Claiborne for Men. Guess what? I have a bottle now, brand new, not brand new, it's, a, it's an older vintage bottle, but this is another fragrance I wore back in around 89, 1990. Really loved it. My mom had bought it for me from Macy. No, maybe it was Emporium Capwell. Those of you that lived in the Bay Area remember that store and really enjoyed it. And there was a woman's version, which in that haul video with Dahlia, it is in there. But with the, the men's version in there, it was actually not a fragrance, it was a powder. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. This is an 89 release and it's considered a citrus chypre. 
It's very citrusy, but also has lots of sheeper touches. It has notes of oak moss, lavender, juniper, bergamot, lemons, melons, green notes, musk, leather, patchouli, jasmine, carnation. Yep, very sheeper like. It's a very unique smell, really original to me. Even though in the background you can tell it's a Shepra, you can tell it's a citrus Shepra, but that melon in here kind of throws a curveball, but really pleasant, really nice. Really a wonderful fragrance. This is really good. Smells really, really like from what I remember smelling. And several years ago, several years ago, could be like five, six, seven years ago, my sister had brought up the kids to my mom's and we went to TJ Maxx or one of those stores and they were still selling some of those there and my nephew bought a bottle it was like discounted for 10 bucks uh, it didn't smell as good as this though that's for sure anyway this is great scent really loved and I love the bottle it's so late 80s early 90s don't you think okay so this next fragrance I had not worn whatsoever this is from a house called Sergio Tacchini and it's Sergio Tacchini uh, the fragrance uh, very typical male fragrance from the late 80s and you know those kind of fragrances look at the the sprayer here um, Sergio Tacchini is considered a, a woody fresh fragrance it features notes of lavender bergamot lime cloves, rosemary, lily of the valley, lemon leaf, patchouli, sandalwood, and vetiver. So typical male fragrance from the late uh, 80s, uh, doesn't have any sweet notes, no gourmand notes, it doesn't get sweet, it's all aromatic, leathers, citruses, and things like that. And this stuff smells good. I can smell the clove in this one for sure and the rosemary, uh, but it's very, very spicy, very aromatic and very citrusy. I mentioned leather, but this one doesn't have leather, but typically you would see leather in those fragrances from the late 80s. But this is really delicious. It's kind of like, uh, like a holiday spices with aromatics and citruses, if that makes sense. Really, really great fragrance, really great. I never wore this one and it smells fantastic. So this is Sergio Tacchini, Sergio Tacchini. So this is another fragrance I never wore and I don't know much about this brand, but I know I wanted a bottle of this particular fragrance because I love the bottle. I don't know why I never wore this one. Maybe the brand didn't really, I didn't know much about this brand. Anyway, it's Jesus Del Pozo, this is Quasar. Anybody know this one? It's from 1994 and it's created by Christopher Sheldrake who created uh, a lot of the uh, Serge Lutens fragrances. This is considered aromatic fruity style and still not too familiar with this particular fragrance. Let's go ahead and spray it and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it. But it, apparently the notes are banana leaf, fruits, bananas, lavender, rosemary, oak moss, geranium, sage, cedar, patchouli, sandalwood. It's considered an aromatic fruity fragrance definitely very fruity and definitely very aromatic and this one to me smells like it's still kept pretty nice except the notes are not so vibrant like you know how they get when they age they, they kind of like lose their qualities and luster or whatever you call it but still it's got metallic touches and i'm getting those metallic touches from all the aromatics contrasted with uh, the uh, the other notes and the citruses and things like that ah it smells good I like that one, Quasar from Jesus Del Pozo. And then last, this is, this is the last of the fragrances that were gifted to me. This, I don't know anything about. Oh, wait, do I? Oh no, yeah, this, this fragrance I don't know anything about and there's no mention of this particular fragrance in any databases. This is uh, called Don Quixote and it's Don Quixote Paris. I know nothing about this one, uh, I'm gonna basically tell you what I'm smelling when I'm smelling it. I don't know what year it was launched. I don't know who the perfumer is. I don't know anything about the brand, but look at that kind of uh, cap. Very interesting, right? Let's see. From where I'm smelling after I spray it, it smells fine. It's very peppery. It's also citrusy and aromatic as well. I think I'm gonna spray some of that on me to see, cause I don't know much about this one. Anybody know this one? Let me know. Don Quixote. So it's very peppery for sure and woody. It's kind of like, um, 
pencil shavings and pepper together. Maybe some incense in there as well. At least that's what I'm smelling. Kind of could come off like something like from Comme des Garcons in their incense series or woody fragrances. It's kind of unique for a fragrance like this. It's kind of uh, very interesting that I'm getting incensey touches. So that's the last of the fragrances that were gifted to me and I've got a bunch of other fragrances that I purchased and maybe one of them still also was gifted to me. So in that video once again with Dahlia, uh, I did a haul video of the uh, storage unit. Uh, one of the fragrances that I saw in there was um, a fragrance from the house of Guy La Roche and it was called Horizon. While I was in um, while I was in uh, the UK, London, I don't know what I was doing, but I was shopping for some fragrance online while I was in the hotel room. And on Fragrance Sex, I noticed that Horizon was selling. Instantly bought two bottles, instantly to have it shipped, you know, to my house. Uh, and here they are. So I've got two bottles now, in addition to the one uh, from that video. But this is a fragrance that I actually really, really loved. and. Uh, and even though the fragrance that I got in that haul video smelled pretty good, I wanted something a little fresher. And these are old boxes. I don't know where they ended up with these, oh, with the stock. Maybe they purchased some stock from somewhere and they're selling them. But this is definitely a smaller bottle. This is created by Alan Astori. It's considered an aromatic green fragrance. And I have to really love this bottle, really do. It kind of reminds me of uh, the Dracar Noir bottle, obviously. Uh, but it's uh, got all this kind of indentation and uh, design work on it and it's blue. Uh, it's 1993, considered an aromatic green fragrance. Let's go ahead and smell it. I haven't smelled this yet because uh, I received it when I, when I got back. It still sprays good. So this to me has a fruitiness that I'm really digging, but it's very, very aromatic. There's definitely a mintiness there that's really, really hitting my nose. And I liked about, I like about that mintiness. But according to the notes, it's aldehydes. There's oak moss, pine tree, leather, green notes, cassis, lavender, mint, artemisia, carnation, cyclamen, caraway. This stuff is really, really great, guys. This to me, maybe kind of also is a bit aquatic or some kind of, not necessarily marine, but there's definitely some like watery touches, uh, but really, really great fragrance. I love that. I'm so glad. I don't know, I don't know where FragranceX got this uh, merchandise, but these, this is how it was sent. No cellophane or anything on it. So maybe some, somebody had some stock somewhere and they, they bought it out to sell. Anyway, I'm glad I have the Gila Roche here Horizon. Any fans of that one, uh, do let me know. So one of my favorite fragrances from Armani Privé collection is Armani's Mer Imperial, but I never got a chance to buy it. And recently I was, um, uh, I came across a couple of uh, bottles and I bought one of them and uh, it's a tester bottle but um, thankfully I have a bottle. I don't know if you guys are fans of this one. I was too late to buy this one. It was one of my favorites from the collection, but I'm glad I have it because it's discontinued. It's a 2013 launch. I don't know who the perfumer is and it features myrrh, amber, benzoin, vanilla, saffron, pink pepper. So let's go ahead and try this. So it's an amber with lots of myrrh. So it's very, very smoky uh, and leathery as well and, and peppery. This is super delicious, guys. Wow. Yum. This is really, really good. I don't know why it got discontinued, but I, I can see why. It's not your traditional, kind of a very popular style of fragrance. It's not, uh, you know, Delina, or it's not Baccarat Rouge, or Lost Cherry, or anything. So, one more fragrance that was gifted to me by someone else. Uh, this is uh, Mugler's Angel Garden of Stars Violet. Angel, Violet Angel, Violet Angel. Came out in 2005, created by Francoise Caron. Do you guys know this perfumer? She used to do a lot of fragrances and she's actually mentioned in uh, the book, The Ghost Perfumer, if you haven't read that book. Let's see, where is uh, the sprayer here? So this is uh, kind of like a violet fragrance with uh, the Mugler DNA. Very violet, it's like violet candy is hitting my nose. Oh, wow, that's delicious. 
This is violet with violet leaves, so there's got the violet candy, it's got this kind of watery ozonic touches with the violet leaves. There's definitely earthiness from patchouli, which is what Mugler is all about. There's woods, there's oak moss, but you know what I'm getting under there? There's something like a, like caraway or cumin under there. That is super delicious, super delicious. This is a great collector's item. They don't, they don't make this fragrance anymore. And uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Mugler, I used to be, but definitely uh, more of a fan of vintage Mugler, not the current crap that they're doing. And where are the men's fragrances, Mugler? What the heck is going on? Yeah, that is a great one. That's a great fragrance to have. And last but not least, this is one that I wanted to have just as a collector's item. I'm gonna just use it as a collector's item. I'm not gonna use any of this fragrance. This is Chanel number no. five, low in the red bottle. This was a limited edition red bottle. As you can see, it's full. I was able to buy a tester of it. Um, that's how the bottle cap should go. And, uh, they did a whole slew of red bottles one year. Uh, they did the Parfum in the number five. They did the Eau de Parfum. And of course they did the Low. And it's a 2016, originally the Low came out. And then they did this in 2018. It's Olivier Polge. It's Oris, Ylang Ylang, Aldehydes, Jasmine, May Rose, Vanilla, Cedar, White Musk, Lemon, Orange, Neroli, Bergamot. Typical smell, if you're familiar with the low version of Chanel No. 5, it's definitely a watery, lighter, airier version of the original. Uh, it's kind of made for a younger generation. I don't even know if the younger generation likes Chanel No. 5. Do you like Chanel No. 5? But this bottle is to die for gorgeous, and that's why I wanted a bottle as you can see. Anyway, that's the haul video. Let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Do you know them? Do you have them? Have you been wanting them? Uh, or do you hate them? I'd like to find out what you think about these fragrances. I'll put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. So the video that you watched was shot probably around three weeks ago. I shot that video as soon as I returned back from my trip to the UK, but I knew that I was going to air a video with Dahlia that I did a haul video of, a storage unit haul video. I don't know if you guys caught that video. Go catch it if you haven't. It's pretty long, pretty detailed, and there's loads of uh, fragrances that I had purchased from a storage unit auction, uh, completely blind, and the reactions to the fragrances that we smell in that video are pretty priceless. So I shot this video that you just watched about three weeks ago and it's just airing now. So within the time frame of shooting this video, I've ended up with another fragrance that I am absolutely obsessed with. This is also a discontinued fragrance and one that I've been wanting to put in my collection. In fact, I had purchased a 250 ml decanter of this, a Tom Ford uh, decanter bottle back in 2014 and I had since run out and couldn't find a bottle. So finally, Plum Japonais is here in my hot little hands and I am so, so happy that I have this particular fragrance. This fragrance is, you know, I think it was pretty darn good when it was first around and I kind of lost interest in it. But when I smelled it again after, way after I had, you know, finished my 250 ml decanter bottle, I fell in love with it all over again and I was kind of obsessed over the smell. So I've been wanting a bottle, but I just couldn't find a really great deal on a bottle. And I had some friends who were telling me I have access to a bottle, blah, blah, this and that, this and that. Never really panned out. But thankfully, another friend actually said, guess what, I have access to a bottle of uh, Tom Ford's Plum Japonais. It's gonna be yours because you have helped me out a lot. So, Plum Japonais is my, is my hands right now. So it's a 50 ml bottle and I will cherish it as uh, much as I can. But you know what, there is an alternative that I have spoken about for this particular fragrance called Smoky Plum. So if you don't know that fragrance, I have spoken about it on the channel and recommended it as an alternative for this. And it would be a great alternative for Smoky Plum, I mean, for Plum Japonais. And uh, it's almost, 
really, really close to the original Plum Japanay. There are some minute differences, but if you can't get your hands on a bottle of Plum Japanay because nobody seems to have it, and if they do, they have really jacked up the price, I think uh, uh, you know Smoky Plum will do fine. So I have a link to Smoky Plum in the info box. You can go try and get a bottle. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. I think it's around $65 for 100 ml. So it's an inexpensive price, but I personally am happy to have a bottle of a Plum Japanay in my hands now, in my collection, since I have been wanting it. But I was really happy with Smoky Plum when I didn't have this because the couple of times I recommended uh, Smoky Plum as an alternative for this fragrance Plum Japanay, I was satisfied with it, but now that I have this, thankfully gifted by a friend, I am happy to have uh, this and of course the alternative as well. Are you a fan of uh, Plum Japanay? Do you enjoy it? And have you guys already purchased a bottle of Smoky Plum? And what are your thoughts on that uh, f uh, fragrance uh, that I had recommended as an alternative to Plum Japanay? Do let me know, put a comment down below, and thank you so much for watching today. Stay tuned for another video tomorrow. Bye-bye.